the indoor cycling season is here and the problem people on their trainers can relate to is the indoor cycling table. We need a proper place to put computers, water bottle, towels and so on. Today I'm going to build an indoor training table that will be cheap, easy to build and very stable. So make sure you watch this whole video through and I will give you a really good table for your pain cave. Let's check it out. Now before I start the build, I will walk you through some of the materials I will use, the tools I will use. When we start building, I will begin with measurements, I will do cuts, assembly, paint and finalization. Okay, so I have made a drawing or a sketch of this and uh, the construction will be in the shape of a Z where the legs of the table go in a diagonal. It will be bolted to the edge of the bottom and in the middle of the top. I will then put a board in the bottom and, uh, and the stay in between the legs and finally some angle brackets and it, it's all to, to make the table as stable as possible. Pretty straightforward, it's gonna be stable and hopefully very useful. So let's go through the materials. When it comes to the materials I will be using, these are like joists. These are actually pre-used, not a very nice color, but I will be painting these so it doesn't really matter. But these will, I will use as the base. Then we have planed joists as well that is a little thinner that I will use both for the angles up as the legs of the table as well as stabilizing boards around the top. And then we have this one that is uh, a little thinner. I'm going to use that as, as the stay to increase the stability of the table. Then we have OSB board. Also had it laying around, so I'll be using it. We have uh, bolts, washers, some nuts. Uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty much all. Now, the tools needed for building a table like this is nothing fancy. It's stuff that most people have in their tool bags at home. It's a regular foxtail saw, an angle iron, a pencil, tape measure, a spirit level. I use a hammer, always good to have. A power drill. We have socket wrenches, clamp, brushes, sandpaper, a knife, always good to have. I prefer to use the circular saw. It saves a bit of time compared to the foxtail saw, but they both work and I use both. And of course, some safety gear. So that's pretty much all you need. As I said, this is stuff that most people have in their toolbox, so nothing fancy. Okay, we're ready to start building. As I said, I will start out with measurements, so let's go. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Now I'm gonna measure up the OSB board. I only have to cut it on the length. So let's just measure out 70 centimeters wide. Yeah, let's go. Now I measure it both here and on the other side here. Then I use the angle iron to get nice straight lines and a perfect angle. And they will hopefully meet in the middle. Looks good. So that's where we're gonna cut. Okay, I'm done with the measurements and I'm gonna continue on to the cutting. Now I continue to measure throughout the process because I have a rule of thumb to always measure twice. Once in advance and once before you'd make the cut. Okay, I'm ready for the first cut. I begin with control measurement, 70 and 70 looks great. Safety. Cut is done and um, the top is ready. Let's continue on with cutting up the rest of the material. Have you ever failed? Are you listening? Damn. Let's put this one in.
Uh, to make sure I get the same length of these uh, bottoms, I just simply put them on top of each other like this and I make the measurement from there. Okay, I have cut up all the material that I need, so I will continue on to assemble the table. Okay, so I have laid it out here pretty much how I will assemble this. So this is the base. I will bolt this one and then it will go up to the middle of the top where I will bolt it again here. The idea is that the bolts will support this one enough to hold this one up. Okay, here we go. washer on one side, drive it through, then a washer and a nut. Like that okay as you can see I have now clamped and measured out the top as you can see it's uh, it's perfectly aligned so I think this is gonna be good I have clamped it and I will now drill holes for the bolts there as well and then let's go with the other side Okay, so the first side is done. Now I'm gonna make a copy of this one, but it's gonna be inverted. So it looks the same, but the opposite. So that means that we're gonna use these as templates. Now I will disassemble this one again so that I can match these up and simply draw the holes exactly where those holes are. And the same thing with this one and the base so that every hole gets in the same place. So what I'm gonna do is to take these and I'm gonna put them like this side to side. I'm gonna make sure that they are perfectly aligned and I will then drill through these holes so that we get the holes exactly on the same spot. I aligned them perfectly here like that. Take the clamp nice and tight. Okay, the final holes are done and we can now assemble both of the sides. Hopefully they will line up perfectly because they should. Both of our sides are complete. We're gonna continue on with mounting the top and those stays in between to make the table real steady. I'm gonna put a board in the bottom here to give this table some real good stability. I don't want to have it too far back because that will interrupt the wheel and I want space underneath the table. So I will probably just do it like, I don't know, 30 centimeters, something like that, halfway in. That's what we're gonna do now. Damn. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. 
Now I have measured out the 30 centimeters wide board that I want to have and I will now cut it accordingly. Okay, we're now gonna put those out back together and this is pretty much how this will play out and I will screw it together like this. bottom plate is there so let's continue with the top and before I start to mount that one I will use this spirit level to make sure that both of those are in perfect level because if they're not the table will be very uneven but this looks fine so I'll take the top and I will put it on here it's gonna have a little bit of overhang here so it's gonna be aligned with this one on the outside here and the same thing here Something like that, and then perfectly aligned here, there. So this is pretty much how the table will look like once we're done. Okay, the final screw is in. The table is pretty much done. I'm gonna add some stability features to it, some angle irons and some stays just to make it really stable. But this is pretty much what it will look like before we get some paint on it. Now I'm gonna add some stability features. Amongst them are a pair of angle irons. And then I'm gonna mount a stay, something like this to strengthen the construction a little bit extra so that we really get a nice stable table that doesn't wiggle. It's time to mount the stay up here. I won't measure out exactly where to put it, but I want it quite high to increase the stability of top. So probably something like that. It's a very thin piece of wood and it might crack if I just shoot two screws straight through it, especially so close to the edges. So I have used a two and a half millimeter drill to pre-drill a couple of holes just to make it a little bit easier on the wood here. I will use the spirit level to make sure that it's perfectly in line. And there we go. Okay, my indoor recycling table is pretty much assembled and done. What's left is that I'm gonna smoothen out some edges with some sandpaper and then I will splash some paint on it as well. Okay, I'm gonna smoothen out the edges a little bit just to make it a little bit nicer using 120 grit sandpaper. Okay, the edges are nice and smooth and I will now dust and clean the table before I can get to the paint. I've stirred up the paint and I've put some brown paperboard to the floor to protect it. We're ready to uh, put some paint on this table. Now, this being a surface that is 
quite rough, that means that I need to uh, use quite a lot of paint to get it to cover everything. I want to avoid painting twice, I might have to do it anyway, but I will simply put a lot of paint on here. Now the paint I'm using is a regular carpentry paint. It's water-based and it has a lacquer in it. And the table is done. Okay, my indoor trainer table is complete. And I must say that I'm really satisfied. It turned out great. It's simple to build, it's cheap, and it's very stable. Now the cost of the build landed at just above 45 euros or dollars, which is very cheap. Some of the materials I had from before, but these are retail prices for the materials used. So uh, let's just set up the trainer. Okay, the setup is done and it's just one thing left. All right, nice kit. Let's get going. Okay, the training table is set up and my paint cave is complete. Now, I've built the table out of my own proportions to get it right with my bike. So, of course, I've made some measurements before. I got my computer, I got my water, I got my towel. I can see the television with, of course, cycling on it. If you have a lower setup than I do, then you should lower it. If you have a higher, you should build a higher. But this one is going to work out really good, I think. Now, I will put all the measurements and all the materials that I've been using down below so you can check out the link so right on <laughs> 